Okay, this is lecture 28. We are essentially going to accomplish one thing, to further clarify the confusion about some data using FSR. I will first explain what we think is the difference between melts and solution, and then I will uh, go on to update uh, by discussing a literature result using our new experiments. All right, so let's continue uh, on what we have uh, started uh, last time, which was to uh, uh, focus on this, uh, uh, explaining a little more about this uh, confusion about whether there are differences between solutions and melts in extension. Uh, so today we'll focus mostly on this with a update new uh, paper uh, published, of course, uh, two years after the book, uh, so that we can complete this story. Uh, I, because of the limited time, I will not say very much about this last topic, but I thought I should still take this occasion to mention it. Uh, it's uh, rather important for our group, which is uh, that when you uh, do, you no, know, take extension as the example which was a paper that we did. So there was a paper uh, we published on, on this topic, on this uh, in extension. So basically, uh, uh, if you take a melt, still fairly, melt meaning above Tg, still fairly above Tg, uh, typically the response should be that of, uh, uh, the initial response is elastic and uh, it doesn't finish, it doesn't continue forever because of what we talk about in chapter 16, the forcing balance, which, uh, uh, which means you cannot have elastic uh, stretching forever. But when it was elastic, you can s see according to the new hooking type of result, or rubber elasticity type of result, that uh, uh, this, is the, uh, this should guide you for the beginning part of it. And uh, it means, well, you can, I, I'm being casual, so it means if you take plot this, then this is the slope. And that slope is plateau modulus. And then as we know in chapter, in chapter 16, that there is forcing balance leading to yield and, and, and eventually strand localization. This is fine, except when, uh, when the temperature is such where our experiment can access a, a, a higher uh, rate of stretching, you find this initial slope can be much, much higher, like the, like the blue. So this could be, instead of, uh, you know, melt plateau modulus is typically one megapascal or less, this could reach 10 or more megapascals. So we call there some kind of a glassy response. And this response is totally, I want to clarify, remember this is the initial slope, so it actually has nothing to do with chain stretching. It's totally due to interchain interaction being, uh, re, uh, being that there's some uh, strong transcend association that is glassy-like in origin, in some sense. But I'm going to uh, skip uh, uh, the rest of the discussions. You can read the original papers, which is mentioned also in the book. I want to uh, go back to this controversy or, or confusion and, and try to clarify this confusion a little bit more. So I... Uh, already started to mention, and I'm going to uh, repeat that mention, uh, that, uh, that we were confused by the fact that in a solution, uh, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, if you can imagine steady, oops. if you can imagine steady state exists, then, which I contest, Meaning, I, I don't think there is steady state, right? Because of the yielding and the forcing balance leading to localized uh, uh, 
uh, disentanglement. But if you pretend there is, then they report that the steady state viscosity versus the uh, Hanke rate could uh, show dropping and then shooting up again, according to the result based on FSR, this kind of disk type of thing, put sample in between and, and draw them. Right? Uh, this is for solution, whereas for melt, you tend to have this one. Okay? So there are paper, papers published uh, on this kind of topic in recent years. Uh, since uh, I should tease about it, since uh, we think uh, two models, do, not why I say we, I mean, Others think the two model is doing too well. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, uh, more interesting to complain that two model doesn't do well. This is the place where where the two model would say solution and melt should be similar, but experimentally you find solution and melt to be very different. In t if you can accept that steady state exists, okay, which is a big if. So, uh, I will uh, go through some of the literature results, uh, mainly going to focus on uh, how we address the, uh, the issues in the literature. So, there are efforts, for example, trying to match a melt, oops, trying to match a melt with a bunch of solutions in terms of uh, so-called the degree of entanglement. That is to say, give you the same uh, plateau width for the different polymers, melt and solutions. Okay? And uh, even forget about steady state. It, just look at the raw data. This is coming from FSR. One is for solution, one is for melt. Right? Using this kind of setup. You can see they are rather uh, peculiarly different. One shows much stronger, well, I hate to use the word strong hardening because this is just a, uh, uh, in our language, is uh, somehow the delayed yield produces geometric condensation effect that tilts this upward uh, because this is, all, um, this is all given in terms of true stress. So there is an extra lambda factor in front of the, the, the tensile force. So, uh, so uh, how, to, how to understand uh, the fact solutions and melts are different? Uh, let's not even talk about something we cannot agree on, which is whether there is steady state or not. I say there is not. Uh, FSRs will have, uh, 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 will like to report that there is steady state. And the way they take steady state is really, as you see in this data, sorry, I have the data, so I may as well just point out what we mean by steady state. Let's just take the last point. The points before you can, uh, beyond which you cannot take data anymore because the specimen is too thin or whatnot. And sorry to say, steady state, remember, this is just drawing as a function of time. Steady state in our mathematical definition means this quantity is no longer time dependent. This quantity being the transient viscosity. Do you really see uh, uh, this turning, turning flat? I don't see it. In other words, you don't have the opportunity to see that they are doing this. Well, oh, this one certainly doesn't because you know why? This is region four. This is the one that's male ruptured. I, 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 in fact, interestingly, they, exclude, they know to extrude, uh, exclude that particular data. But in general, uh, you see this 
leveling to steady state only when you see they produce a theoretical report. In other words, in theory, I can predict that this thing just keep going until there is a steady state. When I say predict, I mean describe. Whether that prediction is meaningful or not, we experimentally, obviously, uh, do not see if, if, you, if you avoid using this kind of uh, uh, not so well defined uh, homogeneous shear, uh, homogeneous extension case. So uh, I will just uh, remind you, uh, as I said, let's, let's not even worry about steady state because you can see the state that doesn't produce steady state, even for me or for anyone. Uh, so, but forget, forget about steady state. Just, even, look at the, even just the transcend. What would be the difference between melt and solution? Okay? So, we have learned that there is uh, uh, the possibility of forcing balance. That's in chapter 16, right? Uh, right or wrong? Uh, uh, you, you will have to exert judgment on your own. Uh, and this force imbalance is about the intra force versus gripping force. And intra force, there is a possibility of reaching non Gaussian stretching, which we really didn't talk very much. Another word in the literature, they call it finite extensibility. Okay, it's all meaning when the chain is somewhat straightened, okay, then the force actually diverges, the retractive force. Uh, if you learn from polymer physics one, uh, the free join, uh, even the free join uh, uh, model, chain model, shows that the, uh, the force will diverge. I commented that that model is likely incorrect because it only speaks about uh, this being uh, entropic. Last time I mentioned. So, uh, so you can see that if you are ever getting into the stretching state, the force imbalance can be really triggered very quickly uh, as the as the retraction force diverges. And uh, at least for transient behavior, that's what we uh, expect to to think about. And now let's talk about the difference between melt and solution. I draw the difference already, structurally. What's different? Well, if you like, the building block, the network building block, the entanglement strands, is very, very, can be very largely different. In other words, the entanglement strain in solution can be much larger. Okay? So remember the, uh, the stretching ratio to reach full extension is related to the number, the chain length. Okay? And therefore, uh, th this is what we covered, the lambda star, right? The, 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 the Basically, the, the so-called uh, L over R, yeah, the maximum length versus the, the coil size. And you can see that the, the, uh, the solution will have much larger, much larger lambda stars. Okay? So if both are in the fine limit, okay, you can see by definition, if you stretch to the same amount, one is further away from lambda star than the other. The solution is further away, for example. So inherently, there could be differences in the solution response, uh, uh, in the uh, differences in the response between solutions and melts. I, uh, since our uh, 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 account is less quantitative, so I have not carried out any of this into a, a more quantitative uh, level. But at this qualitative level, uh, I can understand why melts and solutions will show different trends and response. Because of the, uh, what I said, the, 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 the structural differences. Uh, the 
keeping the z being the same uh, is entirely a different game. That just says your, your, your molecular weight versus the entangled molecular weight being the same. Okay? That, that says nothing about the fact, yeah, the, in fact, in our notation, we call the entanglement lens of phi being that of the melt and phi to the uh, minus um, two-third, actually, roughly speaking. Sometimes we, we just say it's 0 0.6, you know, 0 0.66 or whatever. So basically, the, 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 there is a, this swelling of the network by the solvent, by this much. So this, uh, uh, of course, uh, depend on the concentration. It can change uh, easily by a factor of two or more. So it's an important factor here. So. Uh, Uh, so, so the, the, this uh, uh, is further examined in, in the uh, in the following slides. Here, uh, I was uh, uh, prepare, uh, comparing again, uh, well, illustrating the confusion here. In the literature, for example, they compared a milk. Each time I have. Remember, a melt versus a solution, they match entanglement Z, the same. And they carry this two system to so-called steady state. And that's the data they get from the, the black and the red. In that so-called steady state, which we don't know is steady state or not. And they report, look, for the same Resumer number, which is, of course, what you are uh, trying to compare apple to apple with. Uh, at high rates, there's a big difference. The melt is much lower than the solution for the last point that they can do, which they claim to be state And that is the confusion, meaning, gosh, our two model doesn't say they should be different. Why should it be different? So the zero-order uh, explanation I have for it is precisely that this melt will undergo that forcing balance much earlier, much earlier uh, than the solution. Uh, uh, for, for the reason we just talked about, it, it, the melt is much easier to reach the lambda star limit when chain become uh, straightened. And the uh, solution will postpone that. The effect of that postponement is of that forcing balance is to preserve a little more of the chain network. And therefore, when you preserve it, you have more of this geometric compensation effect. Period. Uh, anytime you have not reached a flow state, you are in this quasi-elastic state, this network is the picture. So if you uh, are, uh, are uh, able to defer the disentanglement, then you will have a stronger. This effect is called geometric condensation effect, right? We went through several times in the past, uh, especially chapter 8 talked about in detail. So, yes. uh, so, in fact, let's, uh, let's uh, 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 look at a, a piece of data that we actually had uh, in the past uh, for a different uh, uh, purpose. So, for example, we had a piece of data where we have melt as red, 80%, 60%, and 40%. And Stretch at the same rate, okay? Stretch at the same rate. Uh, you can argue this uh, obviously means, roughly speaking, you are at the same uh, Rolls-Weissmer number. 
because it the uh, because the short chain is a untangled short chain, uh, and uh, uh, the long chain is the same long chain, so the Rolle's time doesn't change. Okay, so but look at the the result is quite remarkable that that uh, simply the melt gave in much earlier. Huh? You see that how dramatic it gave in at the lambda about uh, three to four. Okay. Whereas the 40% maximum is reached only after beyond lambda equals 10. My goodness, I mean, what happened, right? Uh, the, the zeros, and, and then the stress, of course, gets normalized by the plateau module. Otherwise, it will be apple and orange kind of thing. So, so, so the zeros order picture is obviously, uh, well, I don't even need to uh, make any argument other than to say that the point of yield is delayed, or the force imbalance point is delayed because of the uh, more slowly way of building up the uh, uh, building up the the retraction force. Keep in mind, all this force imbalance argument I've never emphasized uh, is looking at uh, a strand to make the argument. But you know the strand length has a Gaussian distribution. So there's a whole population of different strand lengths. Okay? So that lambda star has a, by definition, therefore, has a huge population. Because the NE has a Gaussian distribution, therefore lambda star has a Gaussian distribution. So many shorter strands could reach the force imbalance point much, much earlier. This is giving rise to all this features that you see. Uh, lean, uh, deviating from linearity. So in any event, uh, uh, it's interesting to note that this maximum is shifted to higher lambdas. And this is also true in their data. So this is the red is pure melt and, and, uh, and uh, blue is the solution. Okay. With that, I'm, I'm reaching uh, a, a uh, the part that I need to update with you guys, uh, or update beyond the textbook. So I'm going to focus uh, in particular on this particular uh, result from the literature. Okay? So this is uh, uh, a paper published quite some long time ago. Uh, 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 adding further confusion about what is going on in extension using male stretching device. So uh, the black points are just reference. It's uh, polystyrene melt. Okay. Uh, that's just a reference. The, this paper focused on, OK, let me back off a little bit. We show a difference or not we show. <laughs> People think there's a difference between melt and solution, and, and this troubles the two model. So the way to explain this two model, in the language of two model is to, ex to, is to add some additional adjustable parameters to the two model by saying that in the melt, uh, the inter segmental interaction could uh, uh, require a reduction due to the fact the chains can be lined up nematically. Uh, in any case, that's their explanation uh, that uh, if the segments are all aligned, then the friction will be smaller. So this is their explanation. <laughs> friction is smaller, of course, viscosity will be smaller. Uh, uh, Whereas uh, where I came from, without a theory, I was quite uh, certain that if you truly reach flow state, remember flow means flow, meaning, meaning what? Meaning the chains are freely passing each other on the scale of the flow time scales. Okay? If you're freely passing each other in extension in the flow state, then the higher the chains are oriented, 
it should be easier to pass by each other. And that's my understanding of what viscosity means. Okay? Therefore, your uh, observation should only have thin thinning. Just like in shear, we have shear thinning. Nobody disputes that. Okay? Because the chain becomes more uh, 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 it stretched and elongated. In the flow state, there's no elastic thing to speak about. They all pass each other. So the more, uh, the less coil they are, the less resistance to the flow. That's the origin of shear thinning. That principle, I thought, should also work for extension. It, hypothetically, if you imagine you can reach flow state. No elastic state, just the final passing flow state. So, so if anything, it's this result that's weird. The solution one. And the reason they tilt up, two. One, you've mistaken that point as steady state. That point is not steady state. That point is still enjoying the geometrical condensation effect. That's what's bringing this up. That's my interpretation. In any case, uh, the folks in the, lit in, the, in the community was looking for evidence of this pneumatic friction reduction. And so that's the motivation. So how do they do it? They take a polystyrene and make a solution. And this solution is made of three different solvent. The solvent being 1K, 2K, and 4K styrene of the same thing. So it's a binary mixture. Okay? Here are the results they report in steady state which, of course, I think doesn't exist, but they think there is steady state, and they will find that the 4K is the diamond blue, and 1K is the red square. They're obviously far apart. A factor of three here, for example. Far apart. I, I keep on to remind you, this not only occurs because you are misassigning steady state, but could there be other origins of why this is true? Okay. And that's the raw data. Look at the raw data, right? I mean, obviously, uh, the folks take the last point as steady state. Okay. Uh, let's come back to a little bit of polymer science. Very, very straightforward one. Um, we usually are limited by our instrument, uh, uh, the rate, for example, you can apply. Okay? So we typically prefer, in polymer science, in polymer rheology, thanks to the TTS, the time temperature superposition, and WRF shifting factor, we typically will not try to smash our instrument and carry it to its extreme, but rather play with temperature. So how do we do it? I will, for this sample of 1K and 4K, I will use comparable stretching. But you want to keep comparable WI as well, right? Okay? What happens is this, is this 1K starring has a very low TG compared to the 4K starting. Okay? So when you use this two solvent to make a sample, okay, the solution will have very different TGs. For polymer scientists, TG means, uh, TG is a variable that dictates the chain dynamics. Okay? Uh, uh, rule of thumb, you may say, you need to be at equal distance from TG for chain dynamics to be similar. Okay? So I don't recall exactly how much TG they are apart. Uh, let's, uh, because we have our own data. Let's just say about 40 degrees apart. Uh, I, uh, 
I, I, it's conceivable that this original paper reported the, the different TGs. Let's just, for the uh, convenience of argument, let's say they're 40 degrees apart, okay, in TG. So, for example, if you want to collect these two points, okay, sitting at a Weizenberg number, a Ross Weizenberg number of, of one, uh, the way you do it, if you want to keep similar uh, has, uh, was, uh, 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 Hanke rate, then it is to make sure that your two sample have very, uh, uh, are being examined at rather different, sorry, let me, let me back off. As I said, uh, you would want to choose your T to be at a similar distance from its, from its, uh, let me just verbalize it, uh, or read the right, similar distance from its TG. Okay, same with this. Okay, this means one of them will sit at a rather different temperature than the other. So for example, the, uh, we know the answer to that. The, for example, this is the 1K, sorry. This is the 1K, this is the 4K. T1 is higher or lower? Well, since, uh, since 1K has a much lower TG, T1 will be also much lower than T2 by, by, by 40 degrees, okay? Right? Wow, what can happen? What? This is the solvent. You prepare two solutions. I'm saying the two solutions, because of the solvent TG different, the solutions TG will be different by, let's say, 40 degrees. I don't recall, you can go back to the papers, it's arbitrary, this is that. So now, for you to use the same Hanke rate, is for you to make sure that your sample have similar tiles, is for you to sit at a similar distance from TG. So, for one K, it will sit much colder, you know, much lower temperature than another, right? By, by the same amount. So what can happen? Well, this is some answer that we had, just happened to have a lot of experience. Remember, I previously showed you the example of our styrene that not only break down the temperature superposition, but also shows shear strain hardening. All because the styrene was very cold, was very glassy. It's, it's, it goes above TG only because the solvent is so much warmer. So this effect is there. So which one sits colder? The 1K solution or the 4K solution? The TG of the styrene is 100 degrees C. So I'm asking which pyrene polymer feel cold, feel colder when you examine this? Don't, don't randomly guess. We already concluded this, yes? Huh? So for the 1K solution, you are doing experiment at a much lower TG, uh, at a much lower temperature. And then your polymer will start to complain, I'm too cold. Okay, I'm too cold. Right? So there is a guess that when it's too cold, you so, the, so it's related to the breakdown of time position in some sense. That we last time talked about, that's why we talked about it. That your uh, south data report a tau 
which give you this 40 degree thing. But, but the gripping force, because of the self-concentration and all that, may feel much colder. And therefore, you might be applying a, a, a much more effective amount of stretching uh, uh, in, in, in this, uh, in, in this, uh, in this one K case. So that's the speculation, at least. Okay, so let, let, let's just move on to, to our own uh, experiments. So this is the experiment we uh, uh, eventually uh, uh, published uh, way after the book was published. So we suspect that that in addition to the issue of whether there's steady state to report, we suspect that, that there is additional issue uh, that must be investigated regarding uh, samples of polystyrene solutions made with uh, short chain polystyrene. So we basically made the similar uh, solutions as, as in the literature report. So here's our solution. Uh, it's a, it involves a 1K versus a, uh, versus a 3.5K. Of course, at the same concentration, and your DSC shows that these two solutions are what? Well, about 30 degrees apart. So I said 40, but doesn't, you know, 30 degrees apart. By DSC, it's clear that they are 30 degrees apart. And for a uh, rheologist, uh, even an untrained one, uh, you would know that by definition, because of this TG difference, uh, your uh, South data will, will, look, will look just like this, uh, separated by whatever amount because of the TG difference. Okay? So for example, your 1K will be a much, much soft, faster uh, solution. In fact, faster by, faster by, by about third, faster about by three times. Wait a minute. 30 times. Yeah. Of course not three times. So this is about a decade, basically. Uh, 30 times will give me 900 or 1,000. This is almost 1,000. So, so because of the temperature difference, they are going to be separated by 30 times apart. And these are the two uh, WF curves for the two, two solutions. So this is the 1K. And this is the 3.5K. So we're going to do something uh, uh, to learn about uh, what effect to observe. For example, if you want to uh, uh, use similar epsilon dot, you basically want to have them sit at the different temperatures, just like what the previous literature did. So one sit at uh, 100. One sits at 120. Remember, the 100 is that of the pure styrene's TG. Yeah? So this parent polymer sitting there may really start to complain. Wow, I'm half joking, right? They start to complain uh, uh, and somehow aware that I, I, I'm uh, reaching my TG, so, so to speak. Whereas this one is more happy sitting at 120, is more happy. And this effect goes down as you start to examine 120 versus, uh, versus uh, uh, 140. Oops. God. God, what did I do?
it, it just so happened that it started to shift. Uh, let's see if we can tolerate that or not. So basically, that's the, that's the story. We're going to examine this, uh, uh, this system and, uh, uh, and see what we can find and compare with the, with the literature as well. So we, uh, the first thing you'll find, let me just summarize this, this result. The first thing you'll find is breakdown that I previously only sort of mentioned it, didn't go into enough detail. A break, remember, this paper is about comparing two samples. I want to make sure you are absolutely not confused. Regarding breakdown, I'm not looking at two samples. I just need to look at one sample and show you for that sample, uh, the time time distribution doesn't hold anymore. So it turns out it's true for both. So for example, for the 3K, 3.5K sample, uh, sitting at uh, a comparable uh, 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 Weisberg number, Ross Weisberg number, the, the, the two curves do look different. I, by my habit, uh, uh, I should have the red as as the colder one, which look like I omit, uh, uh, missed it. So basically, the 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 ones at 120 undergo a male rupture, actually this one, and the one at 140 didn't. So that's a very qualitative difference. Uh, and there were some additional uh, features that are quite perplexing. For example, the, although this one showed male rupture, the stress level was lower, which is completely crazy. So I think it's, that part is a little bit out of the uh, scope of my... I, I had no intention to explain that particular effect. But it's, it's, it's real. We repeat it many times. So similar with... Uh, um, with the other sample, okay, the one K sample, uh, at the same Weissmuller number, uh, the higher temperature one went through uh, went through maximum and and and, and uh, come down, but the lower temperature one actually uh, uh, male ruptured. So same same effect. So there is a breakdown uh, of time time simple position. And uh, this breakdown is uh, very much related to the self-concentration, to the fact uh, uh, I last time mentioned about it, to the fact that, that, that this, this, uh, this local effect here is very different than the overall effect uh, that dictates the, 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 the gripping force. Um, and then, uh, if you look, at, uh, this this is the closest to the to the story compared to the to, to the literature. Uh, I plotted two pairs of uh, data at the different Weisenberg numbers uh, of 1K versus uh, 3.5K. The, the uh, I know that the symbol is, is such that uh, uh, the, this is the 3.5K. The lower one is the 3.5K, and the, the, the other one is... Uh, so for red, the lower one is the down-pointed triangle. That's the 3.5K. The up-pointed triangle undergo male rupture is the 1K. One, one and the, the basic explanation is because uh, they are not sitting at the same temperature. Just like that literature result. Uh, forget about steady state. We're not talking about, we're just talking about the transient response. The, the response is such that uh, uh, 
um, that uh, if you want to use uh, comparable, we didn't use identical or share, uh, uh, hanky rate, but comparable hanky rates, then you find uh, sitting at the lower temperature is producing a stronger response because, because the, the parent polymer feels colder there. So they have a a uh, it's 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 not necessary to introduce another relaxation, but rather, as I said, it's rather it's it's this thing being strongly affected, the the gripping force. This gripping force is is uh, uh, sitting at one hundred. You have a, a larger gripping force. So that you're delaying the force imbalance. Well, in fact, in this red, in both cases, if you delay it so much that actually you have the entanglement lock up. Actually, you have the you have the male rupture instead. So that's what we see is happening in, 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 as the principal difference between these two samples. It's because we never actually compared apple to apple. And the origin is something we understood before, because uh, uh, because of our, our previous work on, on breakdown of time temperature superposition. And uh, uh, lastly, uh, we want to uh, further examine a case where this is avoided, meaning we're going to avo uh, look at a case where you are going to, oh, sorry, we are going to, you know, you're, you're basically going, gee, you're basically going to, uh, you're basically going to use the same, same temperature. This is terrible. You're going to use the same temperature. See the maxed out now. See that? Jesus Christ. I cut this part. Yeah, it's all gone, huh? That's good. My pen will be back. I think. So basically, we we are uh, in the, in the case of uh, of avoiding that problem. We're going to look at we're going to look at same temperature, which of course in, correspond to very different uh, tiles. Then you just have to use a very different rate. Look at them. And in that case, it was found that the the one k the one k oh lord uh, the one k result is still stronger. That's the one k result than the four k. And then the 3.5k. And that's completely crazy. Because this is not a TG problem anymore. OK, they were sitting at the same temperature. 1k is stronger. Because 1k has a lower TG, you must apply higher rate. Yeah? You understand that? Right? And I want you to make a connection. And higher, higher rate you risk more chance of your sample heating up. You get that? Because, because we, I mentioned about the only way you can avoid it is you stretch sufficiently slowly. OK? So this has a higher chance of, uh, of warming up. But warming up will what? 
will, you, will give you a temperature higher than the prescribed one. Yeah? That's what warming up means. A higher prescribed one will give you a lower tau. Right? Because you prescribe a, a temperature, but because of heating, if actually the temperature was higher, then you would have a, a, a lower relaxation time because higher temperature is lower relaxation. Lower relaxation time will mean a lower uh, uh, Weissmuller number. So your response should be lower. You see that? It's going in the opposite direction, therefore you can, not, you can afford not to worry about it. Right? You can afford not to worry about uh, uh, viscous heating. Uh, so the the paper had an explanation. In short, it actually, if this effect is real, it actually further speaks about, I apologize each time this happens. It further speaks about the fact this interaction is very local. This, what do I mean by that? I mean, of course, this, the gripping force is very local. It is, remember the tau you get from south. It's, it's because you have this chain, and then it sits in a bunch of short chains, okay? That's how you have it. And it reports certain tau for you. But it turns out this force doesn't care about what, is on the, uh, what the short chain is doing to my, to my overall dynamics. It's doing whatever it's doing. So it turns out uh, it, it's equivalent to saying that this short chain being 1K, it, it makes the long chain very fast. That's why you report a south of very fast. But it turns out the long chain could care less about what this short chain is doing for the overall thing. It actually is still very slow. Therefore, you applied a rate that's actually higher than what you thought you applied internally. So it has a stronger response. It has a stronger response here for the 1K. Too good to be true, I'll tell you the truth. This is really reaching way beyond what our previous understanding was. Uh, this is nothing quantitative but it gives you a hint that this thing is very local. Okay, this, this, uh, this uh, grip force is, is very local. Oh, Lord. I just hate this. This is a PC is so... It's only a small file. cut all this part. That's all gone. What are we talking about? So basically, uh, uh, th th this is this is with what we end up. Uh, describing. Um, so the uh, so uh, I think the 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 key message I, I would say is uh, I hope you, I hope you had a sense of it the 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 uh, temper superposition dictating the transient response, we, I haven't followed the, the, the literature more recently. I, I wish other people repeat this. I mean, this is our, we are reporting, our group reporting this several times, but no other group that I'm aware of have been trying to, to, to confirm this. And, and all these different effects are quite, uh, uh, 
te quite tentative in the sense that this is the only result. Uh, it, it shows something rather different than, than the, the understanding ex expressed in, in this paper. And uh, I think the, it's worthwhile for people to, to, uh, re, you know, to make sure that this is what the story. Uh, I, I, uh, it was not an easy experiment, uh, so, but, uh, but the conclusions from this uh, data certainly conf confirm the, the idea that, uh, uh, that, that the basically, if you like, that this, uh, this force is really very local. Okay, it really cares uh, about uh, what what is uh, about what is uh, uh, blocking it. What is what is uh, uh, grabbing it uh, uh, more than more than the overall surrounding. Okay, that's the that's the key. Uh, it seems to be uh, the reason for uh, why time temperature superposition breaks down, for why uh, the 1K have a stronger response, as I mentioned, because it's, uh, uh, it's uh, less sensitive to, to what the, the monomers are doing, the short chains are doing. And, uh, and uh, it's also the reason why there is difference between those two s solutions when you examine at, at uh, different temperatures, but the same Weisenberg number, uh, because the lower one uh, the, the lower one uh, how else can you explain it? The lower one uh, is locally aware that it is at a lower temperature. Okay, I, I don't have a, a, a running out of words because you are using the same isomer number here. Yet it doesn't do it. It doesn't give you the same response. So. In conclusion, I think uh, uh, I, I, I indeed spend a lot of time on this, but I think this is uh, indeed what uh, uh, what we should pay attention to, which is to really figure out what, what FSR does and what FSR does not do. Uh, I. I know on this I'm quite o uh, open in, in challenging uh, what is in the literature. I, I don't think there's anything wrong expressing that opinion. So the different response, uh, it seems to me, is uh, there, there are two, two parts to it. The, 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 the transcend response are different already. We know that. Uh, but that's not what the focus is. The focus was, was to report that the steady state was different. But since we don't think there's a steady state, there's no way to uh, establish steady state, even with the, well, not even, meaning uh, even with this uh, scenario, uh, there's a question of, uh, of how you can define a steady state for a single point. Because anywhere, in principle, anywhere away from this middle plane is something unknown. It's something actually entirely unknown. So I, I, I'm just rephrasing that, that, that uh, in my opinion, a, a major difference is, is in the difference of, of the entanglement lens. Okay? 
and which uh, allows you to postpone force imbalance in the case of solutions. So if you can postpone that, then you can have a greater uh, uh, geometric condensation. So this was my explanation for the difference between solution and melt. As for this uh, particular literature, uh, it was clear that uh, that uh, uh, the the different polymers are sitting at really at the very different uh, uh, basically th these points do not involve the same temperature okay meaning uh, in experiment you, uh, th this one is sitting at uh, this is sitting at a colder temperature um, but I'm not speaking about the same thing, because I, in our experiment, we cannot claim to have studied steady state. OK, so I'm only giving you a hint of anything before so-called steady state, how the transcends are different between those two samples. In fact, transcend, of course, by definition, contains a lot more information than a single point. And we see they are different, really. So uh, with that, I think we are done with uh, chapter 17. I, I, I try to have uh, most of the stuff, uh, and certainly spend a lot of time on this topic, uh, uh, which uh, I think I had a title in the beginning, it looked like, which is uh, so-called uh, Section 5. I had a lot of more discussion because there, is, uh, there was this updated uh, study. That... OK. So we are done with uh, 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 chapter 17. And uh, what's left, I think, is uh, um, what we will do next time, uh, which is. Uh, let me show you. Which is really uh, going to uh, chapter 18. And this actually allows us to summarize. So we will contrast and highlight what was, uh, uh, what was according to the two model and what was, what was this uh, alternative picture. Okay, so today I think we will just stop here.